Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. We're almost at the very end of the latest set of lockdown measures here in Ireland and I really can't wait to be able to get back out, back into the places that I love so much. Now, I would imagine that it's going to be a number of months before I'll be able to go to my beloved Kerry again, but hopefully after April the 5th, which is the latest batch of uh, restrictions are lifted, I should be able to hopefully explore my beautiful county of Cork. But this will more than likely, well, hopefully be the last episode of my vlog that I have to go exploring close to home. So I'm back into my local woods, but in a completely different part of the woods now that I haven't filmed before. I have walked through on a number of occasions, but decided to come back here today to do something different. And what I'm going to do is something that I was inspired actually by a podcast that I did with Chris and Mike Perea. And if you don't know who they are, they're a very, very uh, talented couple. They're from the US and they actually have two different styles of photography. So Mike is a wide open Vista landscape photographer and his wife Chris is more focused on the intimate details. And that's exactly what I'm going to try and do today. I've come here to look it in the woods and find some details that I normally wouldn't photograph. And just to kind of see, can I achieve that type of photograph with the existing equipment as well that I have? Now, I don't have a macro lens, but what I am actually bringing with me today is my 50 mil, my 1.8, the nifty 50 I would have done a video on before. If you haven't seen that video, actually I'll link to it here. But for me, I'm going to try and do something which I haven't done before. So I'm going to look on the floor, look around, go handheld with the camera, see what I can find, see what jumps out at me and see if I can create an image of something around me here. So let's go, let's see how we get on and hopefully able to get a couple of shots anyway. I'll talk you through my process as I'm doing it because it's my first time really doing it anyway. So maybe I'll make mistakes, maybe I won't make mistakes, maybe you might learn something, maybe you can teach me something. So as always, leave me a note in the comments below if you've anything to add to the video. And yeah, let's go now, let's see how we get on. First shot now that I've taken here is of this group of branches from a tree. I don't know if they've fallen this way, they've been placed this way, but they're quite interesting anyway to look at. And I've got my 50 mil lens on and I'm actually shooting at 1.8, which is going to give me a very, very, very narrow depth of field. So to take the photograph here, which isn't that close to the camera, but I'm not in infinity. So I'm actually within that. So I'm taking three shots. One for the closest, one for the middle, and one from the distance. And then I'll join the three of those together in post, very similarly like I would have done actually in a previous episode. If you haven't seen that, I'll link to that as well here, but it's about blending three images together to get your image focus stacked and then sharp from front to back. Um, the light at the moment as well, it's a gray day, so there's nothing for me to deal with highlights. So it's actually straightforward to take the shot. But yeah, first one anyway that I'll take here, might be nice, may not be nice, but it's a good start anyway to be able to play around and look for some different details. It's not as intimate as I was hoping because these are quite a big uh, sequence of uh, branches, but still I do think it's going to give me a nice shot to start me off anyway. So yeah, I'll show you this one and then we'll continue on and we'll go exploring this woods some more.
something I regularly do when I'm out taking photos is I go handheld before I even, even think about putting the camera onto the tripod because that gives you full flexibility, height, left, right, back, front, to be able to compose and find the subject in the first instance because a tripod is something that is very, very helpful. It's a necessity in landscape photography, but it can also be a hindrance because if you are rocking up on your tripod, placing the tripod typically head height, you're not actually seeing anything different. So when I'm walking through here, I have the camera in my hand, I'm looking through the viewfinder to be able to see what sort of compositions I can find. Then I'll move up and down just to see if I can change the perspective of it. And then obviously left and right as well, because it's important, I think, from photography, anyway, from a landscape point of view, it's important to consider what's not in the frame as opposed to what's in the frame. And I do think that today will be something similar to that because I'm going handheld as well now. It gives me that flexibility. Move around from a different subject, go 360, depending on typically where the light will fall. You'll also see what's potentially in the background or not in the background because I'm using the 1.8 to get the bokeh to blur everything else out in the background as well. But yeah, by doing that, it gives you the flexibility, like I say, it gives you options. And you then also have the opportunity to be able to find something that you wouldn't necessarily find at head height. So yeah, we'll have a look around here. There's a couple of nice little things actually here. There's that branch or bark that you see in front of you here. There's some little black spores of mold or fungus or something like that that's growing on it. I might try and take a photograph of that as well. And yeah, then once I get it, if I need to, um, I'll put it onto the tripod and then I'll get the shot as well with the tripod. But certainly different anyway, certainly a challenge. I'm probably going to go off into one more area that I see over here where there's a bit of a pathway. Maybe I'll be able to get a nice shot of that as well. But yeah, for now anyway, I'm going to play around here, see what uh, compositions I can find and then see what else uh, comes to life in the back of the camera. final part now which is at the very end of this pathway and I'm utilizing this uh, railing it's a man-made railing it's made of concrete but as you can see it's covered in moss from many times over the years it's quite a damp area I'm actually standing in a lot of mud as well at the moment but this is going to give me another opportunity I think because the way the light is falling on this right now it's kind of iridescent so I'm kind of liking it as I see it on the back of the camera anyway when I took a couple of test shots but I'll continue on play around here a bit further anyway um, and see what else I can kind of find from an intimate point of view that I'd normally walk by, which was the whole purpose of the exercise as well. So I'm going to finish up this episode of my vlog. The sun is coming out now, as you can see, I'm just getting a bit brighter, so that might actually help this as well. So yeah, I'm gonna finish up this episode of the vlog. If it's your first time on the channel, please hit that subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment. And until the next time, hopefully, when I'm able to get back away from my local woods and going back to some of the beautiful areas that we have in Ireland, I'll see you again. And until then, Schlange Fall.